All right, so I'm here with the new <clears throat> Wakira Lama 400. Um, this little baby came to me in the mail today. Um, obviously, I'm not going to show you how to unbox it and everything that comes with it, but know that everything that came with it is on now. The uh, missiles on the side and the fins on the back were separate. I had to glue these fins on and there's a small screw on the bottom to hold the missiles on. Uh, this is the Desert Camo version. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I have my T-Rex 450 here because I wanted to show you how the size is almost the same when you compare these two together. And that's about almost I would say the 450 has uh, maybe a few inches on it, but uh, it's a pretty nice size helicopter in comparison. Let me switch places with these. And you can see about the same size. I would say I probably have about two, two and a half inches on the 450 in size, but as far as height goes, um, they're about the same height when it comes to main blades. They're about the same height. Uh, the body, obviously, on the Walkira is a lot lower to the ground uh, and a lot smaller. But um, size wise, uh, weight, obviously, the Walkira Lama is a lot lighter than the T Rex. Um, it has two brushed motors which you can go online uh, to RTF Heli and find brushless versions. Uh, motors that you can put in here, you can get rid of the 5-in-1 controller. Um, there's a lot of upgrades that you can do to it. Um, I basically wanted to talk about my first impressions, um, like much like I did the eSky Nano. My first impression uh, was not that great, um, but <laughs> there's a big but in there. Um, I kind of knew that when these things come from the factory, they're not set perfect. I mean, you have to do a little tweaking to them, uh, adjusting the swash plate, getting it level, which we'll go into in a little bit. Um, but basically, when I ch finally charged up the radio battery and uh, the battery that comes with it, which took about an hour of charge time, when I finally got those charged, um, it wanted to roll backwards constantly. Um, these wheels roll, um, so if you set it on a flat, smooth surface like this one, it will roll backwards. So be careful uh, if you fire this thing up straight out of the package, you may have some adjusting to do. So slowly lift off, give it some throttle until it barely comes off the table. Um, or off the ground and see what it's going to do because you may have to land it and you then may have to adjust the swash plate um, so just know that most of the times when these RTF helis come out of the package from the factory they're ready to fly um, as far as technologically uh, but as far as adjustment and control they are not ready to fly uh, for example, it took forward and backward all the way up and it took the uh, left and right uh, almost all the way to the right to get it to hover correctly. Um, also the throttle when it comes to you is all the way down uh, on the gauge. But the good thing is, is that this does come with a graph that you can see. Unlike the Nano, you have to kind of guess by beeps. Uh, this one has a graph you can see and a percentage to let you know exactly where you are on the radio setting. Um, the radio is not complicated. It's a very simple uh, radio. It is 2.4 gigahertz. Um, I had no issues with uh, interference or distance or anything like that. Distance was fine. Uh, just the same as I can get with my T-Rex. Alright, so uh, the simple upgrades that I was talking about was one was a turbo shaft. Um, basically, it is called a turbo shaft. It, some places, other places, would just call it an extended shaft. And this will give me more distance between the top main blade and the bottom main blade A and B. 
So when I put this new blade in, like so, I'll have these sit up higher so I don't have to worry about the blades hitting each other. Called blade strike when I try to change direction real fast or if I go forward and back real fast. Sometimes you can get these two blades to hit together. Uh, <coughs> I was told uh, on the forums that I read that these, these blades that come with it are very cheap and they break easily. So another purchase I made was the Airy Hardened Blade 2 and these are the AX-09 um, and they will replace uh, these main blades and they're a lot stronger and a lot more durable um, for you know if I should run into anything or and it will give me better lift because I won't have to worry about blade flex as much um, you can see here how these blades can flex up and down so I'll have better stability, better hovering control with these new blades and the, this new turbo shaft. So when we get back, I will show you how to get into leveling the swash plate. All right, right away I can see that it wants to roll backwards. Watch that again. All right, so we're back. Um, I uh, while you guys were out, I changed the uh, or while you were on your break, I changed the uh, main blades to with the airy hardened blades. Uh, I replaced the uh, inner shaft with the longer turbo shaft, and uh, to do that, um, I had to uh, take the front canopy off. I had to loosen the back one. I didn't have to take it completely off but I had to loosen it. Um, that's easily done. Uh, first you have to take these wheels off. There's a screw right here. Um, you take that screw out and the wheels pull off. Um, and then there's two screws on the sides. Uh, one here and one down here and that takes the front canopy off. And then there's another one uh, after you take the front canopy off right here as well that will allow you to take the back half off as well. Now there's small wires that go to the LEDs uh, one to the light in the front and to the ones in the back um, that uh, you'll have to be conscious of. Don't just pull it apart. Um, you have to watch for these little tiny wires um, and this little tiny blue one that you see right here blue and black one this has to be disconnected because um, that goes to the front um, the front light and then there's a, a longer one in here that's usually up at the top and that goes to the back lights so those will have to be disconnected um, to get the back and the front canopies off uh, don't try to pull it apart from here um, this crease right here is actually glued together um, you'll actually break it off. This whole piece comes off in one big piece. The, uh, but anyway, uh, we're talking about leveling the swash plate. Um, it's not as difficult um, as it seems. However, I did run into some problems, um, and that was that uh, my trim on my radio was set all the way up. I was basically maxed out. Let me get it there. That's 50%. All right, I was maxed out at 100% up, okay? Which means that I had to unscrew, okay? this uh, ball link um, out all right so let me explain what these two because uh, this like I said this isn't like a um, this isn't like a 450 swash plate it's more like a CX2 swash plate um, there's a good guide out there on the internet for a blade CX2 uh, leveling it's a nice PDF that was written up um, and uh, you can find that on RC groups but here 
uh, I'll basically explain everything that he talks about in that document and basically uh, when you look at the helicopter from the back all right you're gonna see that this side all right when you're let's say I'm looking at the helicopter like this I'm looking at it okay the one on this side okay is going to be longer or shorter left and right okay so if I shorten this one then that's gonna pull it left if I lengthen that one it'll pull it right alright again and then this one on this side is for forward and back okay so if uh, if the elevator trim is set full forward like you see it is here now okay at hundred percent forward alright that means the elevator push rod which is this one needs to be lengthened okay so you're gonna screw it out a half a turn at a time um, until you can basically hover it without having any trim at all and so how you start off is everything is centered on your radio all trims are centered you're gonna hover it in a nice open area and get it off the ground and see what it does kinda like when I was on the table I was showing you how it rolled back like this okay it was constantly rolling back so that made me push my throttle or my trim all the way up so that it would stop rolling back okay and, and that I would got to sit there without rolling backwards okay um, so if that's the case then you need to lengthen this ball link right here okay this controls the forward and back and this one is left and right so let's talk about just the moving back part it means I had to lengthen this ball link well when I went to lengthen it I actually ran out of threads um, and that was because the rod that comes with its stock is 24.5 millimeters long on um, both sides all right so I was actually running out of threads and I got uncomfortable with the amount of thread that was showing meaning that there wasn't much in the ball link itself um, so I got to thinking well if I got a longer rod then uh, then I would be good to go so I found a 28 millimeter 450 rod off my 450s and I replaced the stock rods with a 28 millimeter rod all right so that I could adjust this more out now the thing about these helicopters unlike the CX-2 they do not sit these rods do not sit 90 on the servo arm okay so you're supposed to have everything at 90 all right the the servo arms are 90 but instead of the two rods being straight up and down they're kind of cockeyed like this okay they're kind of leaning in all right which gives you a kind of a weird um, when you go to adjust uh, means there's going to be a little bit more adjustment that needs to happen because they're kind of cockeyed like this okay so to make a long story short I replaced those rods and then what I found was after I had screwed them all in um, I did some hovering some testing and I was able to get it to where uh, I did not need any trim at all so uh, again if the elevator trim is set full forward alright like I showed you on here alright if it's full forward that means the elevator push rod alright needs to be lengthened okay and you screw it out one or, or half a turn one turn maybe depends on how bad it's out of alignment if, if it's full up you could probably unscrew it a turn or two and put it back on and, and level everything out again alright bring everything back to 50 and then as you're hovering you use these trims okay to get it so that it does not move alright and then you turn it all off you sit down and you see where it needs to go and if it's up again lengthened if it's all the way down I'm gonna set these back to 50 now alright if my uh, elevate elevator trim alright is set uh, to 
uh, if my elevator trim is set toward full rear, okay, then I need to shorten this rod, all right, and that will cause it to pitch to the rear, all right, which, in other words, will change direction, all right. So again, if the elevator trim is set full forward, you need to lengthen. If it's set full back, you need to shorten. All right, aileron trim, all right, left and right, down here. If, if I hovered it and it wanted to go left and I had to use this bad boy to get it to stop moving so that it would hover still, all right, that means that this one then needs to be adjusted on this side, all right? Now, so if the L, uh, aileron trim, all right, is set toward the left, okay, if it's set toward the left, that means the aileron push rod needs to be lengthened, all right? If the aileron trim is set to the right, then I need to shorten this, okay? So again, full forward on elevator, lengthen, full rear, all right, the more toward the rear I go, I want to shorten, okay? Over here, left, lengthen, right, shorten. All right, so that's basically sums up the, uh, the trimming and the leveling of the swash plate. Um, you can do it by eyeball, uh, but you have to make sure that this blade is not crooked like it is now. You need to make sure that it's level and flat so that you can look at that swash plate and see, okay, it, it's level. But in all honesty, um, doing it by eyeball, uh, I'm kind of a perfectionist and I didn't have much luck doing that. Um, so I did the hover test and uh, I kept doing it and kept doing it and you might have to do this 10 or 15 times before it's absolutely perfect and you don't have to set any trim or very little trim into the radio. All right, um, so when we get back, uh, I'm gonna go over some other things about the helicopter. Uh, I'll go over the fact that I did break my front wheel and uh, we'll talk about a few more things and then I'll give you my overall review. All right, and we're back. Um, overall, um, this helicopter is probably the one of the most f fine flying machines that I have had the uh, pleasure of flying. Uh, again, I'm still a newbie when it comes to helicopter flying. Uh, I can't even hover nose in yet. So, you know, um, my experience with helicopters obviously is limited. Um, I have two uh, 450s, uh, a regular 450 Pro. I have this now, and I have a an eSky Nano that I just picked up as well um, that uh, I've been playing with. So I'm relatively new in the helicopter arena. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience, so this is just my view, and this is what has happened to me in this helicopter. Now, when you get it, um, you know, the trims may be perfect and everything perfect and it hovers and it's it's absolutely perfect and that's fine. That's great. That's, you know, I'm just telling you I had to I had to get longer rods, okay, because I wasn't comfortable with the length that they gave me, all right? Like I said, the 24.5 millimeter rod compared to a 28 millimeter rod allowed me to do a lot more adjustment here without the swash plate hitting with either the bottom or this top joint or this top uh, plate here. So, flying. Um, it uh, it's flies very well in, in a very light breeze. Um, it was colder outside and I had a little bit of breeze going. Um, it will do a lot more jostling around in the wind than, it's, than a bigger helicopter would, say a 450 or even a 500, but obviously this helicopter is very light um, so any wind is going to uh, shake this little bad boy around. Um, flying in the house, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just really too big and the blade length is quite long. Um, it's not really a, a, a household. I mean, if you got a smaller house like I do in an apartment, 
you know, unless you've got a huge living room or a play area or something, um, then yeah, I might consider it. But um, it, with all the mess that I have around here, uh, I wouldn't do it. All right, so I broke the front uh, wheel off and I've since epoxied it back on and it's fine now. But uh, what happened is, is I, land, I landed a little too hard and I brought it up and brought it immediately down and it hit the ground and it broke the front wheel off. Um, so I had to epoxy it back on. So when you're hovering this thing, um, know that there's no skids under here and that there's just these wheels held on by little tiny pieces of plastic basically uh, supporting the entire weight of this helicopter. So when you bring it down, make sure you have good control and you bring it down nice and slow and easy, just like a real helicopter would. Um, you wouldn't see a real helicopter just fall out of the sky real fast and hit the ground. So make sure you have good control over it. Um, like I said, it hovers very, very well. Um, it's amazing how you can take your hands off the radio and just watch it hover um, for a good you know, 30 seconds or more before you have to you do any input to, to uh, make any corrections. Um, I'm, I read somewhere on the forum where a guy went and put weight in the nose of the helicopter and he said it actually improved the way it, it flew because it is tail heavy. All right, if you look at the, uh, the center point and I let go here, you can see that the tail is pretty heavy. I mean, this is a bad example, but you can see that the tail, um, when you just hold this thing, you can say, hmm, this tail is kind of heavy uh, in comparison to the front. So what he did is he went out and bought a uh, three ounce weight, and he said three ounces in the nose seemed to cure all his problems. Um, I myself have an experience with this, haven't experienced this yet, um, but I may try it. So I went and bought these Pine Derby weights that you can get uh, from any hobby store and they're a quarter ounce each. And so what I may do is I may put on uh, a half an ounce at a time, quarter, quarter, put on a half ounce and I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to stick it on the bottom here. All right. And then if I do notice any improvement, um, you know, well then good. If not, I mean, you don't have to do that. Uh, it was just a suggestion that I read on the forum, so you may want to do it. But all in all, this heli is a fantastic helicopter. I mean, it is built good. The links are solid. Um, everything is very solid and well put together. Uh, I do recommend getting the longer shaft so you don't get the blade strike. Um, I do recommend uh, lengthening if you need to these two uh, push rods all right get the 28 millimeter push rods um, and definitely get the harder blades okay uh, when I crashed and I broke my front uh, wheel off uh, I took it back up and it actually hit the blades and hit and landed like this and it didn't even didn't bend anything didn't bother anything and it was it was perfect I couldn't do that with stock blades, it would break off. So all in all, this, uh, this when I got it shipped to me, uh, this piece was actually popped off like so, and it was in the box loose. Uh, but as you can see, uh, there's a tiny motor in here and there's a tiny hole and it can just be lined back up very, very easily and just pushed back on with no problem. like so. Um, this does nothing. It's mostly for looks. Uh, this actually won't start spinning until uh, you get some RPMs up on the main blades and then this will start spinning slowly. But it does not control your tail. Alright. So, but here's the thing. Uh, when you do adjust these to get it to keep it from flying left, right, forward, and back, um, the tail spin will actually fix itself um, just by the design of the swash plate. Um, so if you uh, get this thing, you know, off the ground and the tail is just spinning like crazy, all right, use your trims, take that spin out, and see what happens, okay? And then 
something else obviously will happen. It will either fly left or right, forward or back, when you get rid of that tailspin and you just adjust these accordingly. So that basically sums everything up. Um, it is an, a fantastic helicopter and I might go out and buy a few more of these actually and uh, keep them around. Uh, spare parts are, are relatively cheap and uh, it's just a very fun beginner helicopter to fly. It's, you know, like I said, it's a fun helicopter and that's what this hobby is all about. You don't need the biggest, baddest, coolest looking helicopter um, that you're scared to fly. This thing, you, I mean, just fly it, you know, okay? If you break it, well, there's parts available that you can buy and pick up. But uh, all in all, I would definitely recommend it. And that's my review of the Wakira Lama 400.